Marcos Viegas for Fight Up TV here with Matthew Macklin and uh, what is the end of the uh, blizzard 2017? Just about. Out <laughs> over here. Um, you guys get blizzards like this back home? Rarely, rarely really? like this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah not like this. Yeah. Not as bad as this. Oh man, this is terrible for me because I come from sunshine. And 80 <laughs> I left 80 degree weather to come to this, so yeah. it's it's kind of befuddled me. But uh, man, you're doing a lot of things since uh, you retired. Yeah. You're managing now. Um, you have a fighter, obviously, Michael Conlon, that fights this yeah. Friday. I guess how's life for you on that side of the business now? Yeah, good. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm actually enjoying it again more so than it was the last couple of years in my own fighting career. You know, you kind of. You, you're looking, I think, towards the end, trying to recapture a bit of form, maybe get another shot at that title, that type of thing. And um, but that really, the love had gone for me the last couple of years, uh, when I actually feel like I'm getting the love back in a different capacity. Uh, you know, I feel really excited about Michael's career. I think he's going to go all the way and be a big star in the sport. So uh, you know, it's good to pass on the knowledge and wisdom that I've picked up. Uh, through my own career and all the mistakes I made and, 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 and things I did right as well and obviously it's good to pass on that advice to him and watch him go on and fulfill his potential and you know be the best fighter he can be. It's kind of like, I don't want to say like having a son but maybe kind of in a way it's like you see a part of yourself in him and it's like you want to nurture him and make sure he doesn't make the mistakes that you made. Exactly, exactly. I mean I think I'd say a lot of fighters when they retire think I'd love to have my time again you know with the wisdom that I now have so obviously you don't get to do that but if you can kind of pass that on to someone that you know that you like and you believe in and, and you get to know and you know boxing is uh, you spend a lot of time with each other and you you know you get close and you build up a relationship with with, with uh, fighters and uh, and man when, when I was fighting myself you know you always looked at your trainer and managers almost like mentors and, and, and like you know there's almost an element of like a father figure to it you know so if you can kind of there is that duty of care and if you can kind of pass that on and you're looking out for someone and you feel that you help him fulfill his potential where you know maybe if your guidance wasn't there maybe he wouldn't and then you feel really good about that you know you it's um you know it's not it's not completely selfless because you're getting something out of it you enjoy that you know if you uh if you can help someone there's a real feel good factor to that and uh i think michael's um you know we, i'm 10 years older than him you know i've kind of been there done it you know certainly certainly to a, a certain level and uh you know i feel he can surpass that i think he can go on and become world champion Possibly, you know, in more than one weight division, and I think he can really uh, not just be world champion, but I think he can really, uh, as long as you know, he's managed and promoted correctly, which I feel he's got the right team, right people behind him to do that. Then I think he can uh, go on and become a huge name, a big, big star. There's a, a lot of push from top rank. Like I haven't seen anybody push a fighter like this in a debut for like a very long time. Like yeah. he's gotten a lot of press, like all over. You know, for you. What was like the the one thing that you said? You know what? He's right for top rank. Top rank's right for Mike. Well, you know, I think for um, you know, there's, there's there's a couple of big ethnic groups in New York. Puerto Rican being one, Italians being another, Irish being another. You know, you you can't walk a block and there's an Irish bar. You know, Woodlawn, uh, Woodside, they big big Irish areas, thousands of Irish, and uh, you know, John Duddy was uh, very popular here a few years back. I myself sold out the garden when I fought Sergio Martinez for the title on St. Patrick's Day. It'll actually be five years to the day when, when Mick makes his debut. Um, you know, so I've seen what can be done here. Also, you know, back in Ireland, the, the economy's recovering, but it's not great where it was probably back in the time, you know, kind of mid 2000s, it was booming. There was a Carlton Tiger uh, economy boom. and. Uh, then it went very bad. Now it's it's okay, it's stabilized, but it's, you know the money isn't there for big television networks like there is here in the states. But there is a there is a market here on the east coast in and around New York, Boston. There's a huge uh, Irish um, contingency here, and there's a big audience for boxing here. And uh, you know Conor McGregor has shown, although it's a different sport, but it's a sort of, it's a fighting sport, it's a combat sport. It's shown what can be done, and Michael has the ability, I think he has the personality to transcend it as well and to become a huge star and uh, I always felt that this was the place for him, I thought that top rank were the people that could do that, you know, they've brought the likes of Miguel, basically what they did with Miguel Cotto with the Puerto Rican uh, Beat fan base, he can, they can do with Michael Connor with the Irish fan base, and I think it's important as well because of Michael's amateur pedigree and, and, and ability that you know, you know, Brad Goodman, Bruce Trampler, they're probably the two best mate, matchmakers in the sport. I think it's important that he's brought along at the right pace, you know, not 
not held back, not rushed, not rushed, but certainly not held back. I think he's, you know, he's 25 years old now. He's mature. Uh, you know, he's had hundreds of amateur fights, boxed, you know, in two Olympic games. And I do believe, you know, you're talking maybe 15 fights. I think he'll be ready for a world title fight. So I don't think, uh, I think, you know, it's important that he's moved without being rushed quite quickly. You becoming a manager, I guess. How did that work out? Because I want to say, in one sense, you can connect with these guys a hell of a lot more than Joe Schmo yep. promoter or anything because you live the life. You know yep. how it is on the other side as well, you know. But on the other hand, I guess, you know, how did you fall into it too? <laughs> um, well, do you know what? I I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I was very hands-on in my own career. Like, you know, I had a manager, but, I, you know, I, I, I made every decision. We discussed everything, but I made every decision. I, I knew everything that was happening in my career, and I, and I insisted on knowing everything. I was, I was very impatient at times. I was, you know, I, t I put myself about, I networked, you know, I was, on many, I was on every conversation that was involved in my career. Made lots of mistakes, made lots of right moves as well. And, uh, over that time, I got a real education in how the business of boxing works, not just not just about training and different things, but understood the business side of things. Um, so I think it was a very, it was inevitable that I was going to go into that side of the boxing uh, after I retired myself. Um, and you know, it's uh, you know even even little, even little things like. Um, you know, coming over here with Michael in November for 10 days to check out Manny Robles, check that he liked him, you know, told him that it was important to, you know, get, get a good accommodation because I've done eight weeks in America where I was just living out of a hotel room and I know how lonely it can get and how much you can get cabin fever and, and I, I, I understand that side of it from a fighter's point of view. So I know, I know that's very important to get that right as well. Not just about, you know, hammering out a good contract and getting a good deal. It's like, you have to be happy, get surroundings right, everything. I don't know how important that is and I know what, so, you know, I came out here with Michael, we, you know, and I put that time in with him, we spoke with him, we got everything sorted. So, that when he did come out here in, in January, he hit the ground running, he settled in very quickly, you know, and, and he's not going to have any problems down the line with loneliness. His, his partner came out with him, his child. So, it's important to get that side of, the, of everything right as well, because, you know, if you're not happy and you're stressed out or you're missing home and you're getting homesick, it's, it's not going to play out the way you want it to play out. So, you know, I think you have to set out your story. You have to start as you mean to go on. He's got that all, all uh, sorted and, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's really enjoying it.